want to talk about is nuclear energy and really about energy in general. What are the three things that governments and people have to think about when they think about energy policy? Well, the first one is energy security. Do we have enough energy? And the second question they have to ask themselves is energy independence. Where is that energy located? And the third one, of course, is climate change. Now, do we have enough energy? Well, if you think about nuclear energy, you're building a big infrastructure project. You're building the big infrastructure project, and you can make those infrastructure projects, those nuclear power plants, you can build as many as you need for your population. If you think about energy independence, you can build those power plants in your own country rather than, because there probably is enough energy in the world. I mean, it's probably, we have Russian gas, we have Saudi oil, but all those sources of energy have to cross national boundaries and sometimes there are problems. Whereas if you look at energy independence from building nuclear power plants in your own country, like we're building Hinckley, then you deal with energy independence. And then there's climate change. Well, we all know that nuclear energy does not emit carbon. So if you're looking for a good source of baseload generation, that means energy that's pumped 24-7, because wind and solar answer those questions, but it only works when the wind blows and the sun shines. And frankly, some of the places in the world which are relying on wind and solar now, like Germany isn't the sunniest place I ever met in my entire life, and Scotland is windy, but not all that sunny as well. So what you need is baseload generation to support that other good type of energy that we're all talking about. So you would think that nuclear answered all those questions. You build the power plant, you have energy security, as big or as many as you want, you put it in your own country, that means that you don't have to cross national boundaries, and you deal with climate change. So if it was so easy, why haven't we building nuclear power plants for all these years instead of having a big debate now about Hinckley? Well, the answer, of course, is there have been some accidents. There was Chernobyl. Chernobyl is an accident waiting to happen. It was old Russian technology, and the people who were running that um, power plant were kind of pushing it to its limits. And when a problem happened in the reactor, I'm told they knew there was a problem and the operator just got in his car and drove away and the good old Russians never told anybody until the Scandinavian countries felt the radiation. Then there was Three Mile Island. Now Three Mile Island was actually not a failure. It was a success. When there was a problem in the reactor, everything closed down, nobody was hurt, nobody was killed. There, were no, there was no problem really except that the government, rather than saying we've done everything right, we've, we've dealt with this issue, made a big issue about it. And the reason they made a big public relations issue about it was six weeks before there'd been a movie called The China Syndrome. Does anybody remember The China Syndrome? Beautiful Jane Fonda with all her beautiful hair telling us that we were all going to be blown to bits. And six weeks later, there was an accident, so everybody thought we were going to be blown to bits. So Three Mile Island was a big problem because of that. Now, at that point, people really stopped building power plants. And everybody thought it was because of Chernobyl and because of Three Mile Island. But actually, the reason they stopped building power plants was because the price of oil went down. And when the price of oil went down, people didn't need nuclear power. And so the world stopped building them for a long time. Now, when I was chairman of the Atomic Energy Authority around 2006, we were realizing, I need to get on with this, we were realizing in the government that there was about to be a very difficult winter, and we might not have enough power for the country. And then the Russians pulled the plug on the Ukraine gas. Does anybody remember that? And that problem could have focused the government. Tony Blair was the prime minister then on the fact that we should start building power plants. And he put it famously on the agenda. So we started to talk about building nuclear power plants in the 2007, 2008, 2009 time. And at the same time, in the world, people were coming to the same conclusion. We need nuclear power. We want it to be carbon free. This is a good source of energy. The price of oil was very high then. And so the world started what was called the nuclear renaissance. And people were looking around in many countries, not just China, which is building lots of them now, but at the time, the Germans were extending the life of the power plants. The Italians were considering building power plants. The Turks were building them. The French were building them. The um, Eastern European countries were all building them. 
And then we had Fukushima. And Fukushima sort of stopped everything. What happened in Fukushima, as probably everybody knows, is there was a problem in the power plant. There was a big earthquake. 20,000 people were killed in the earthquake. And then there was a tsunami. And the, the, at that point, the deaths were from the earthquake. But every day we read in the paper, nuclear disaster, nuclear disaster, February 11, February 12, February 13, five years ago, nuclear disaster. Because that's what pe the journalists were talking about as the problem. People forgot actually, that it was the earthquake. Now, the problem is that nuclear isn't trustworthy. And we're on to trust now. Why, is, why are people nervous about nuclear? Why does it always make the press? Why is it that there are 43 reactors that could operate in Japan now, and only three are operating? It's because nuclear is scary. It's scary. It's about radiation. Radiation is scary. It's invisible. You can't touch it. You can't see it. Some people in this room have grown up with The Simpsons. Has anybody watched The Simpsons cartoons or your children? Well, if you think about The Simpsons, for 20 years, we've all been told that the operator of the nuclear power plant is the evil guy, right? He's the evil one. So nuclear is evil. We can't see it. Nobody knows about it. We're scared of it. When actually, we all know, because scientists in this room, that you need radiation for so many of the medical treatments that we all have all the time. That radiation is all around us. I get more radiation when I fly to Japan, which I do every month, than walking around Fukushima, which I do less often, but reasonably often. Radiation is all around us. If you live in Wales, you get it from the stone walls. But we're scared of it. We're scared of it. We don't understand it. And we don't trust it. And we don't trust the operators. And why don't we trust them? Because they don't communicate, because they don't tell us what's going on, because they haven't explained what's happening inside a power plant. And so people are afraid. Now, the UK has done a good job on this. Right after Fukushima, we surveyed the people around Hinkley, and 60% of them said we should continue the nuclear project, because we had, at the Atomic Energy Authority, gone out into the community to educate the people, to educate the children, to go into the schools and say, this are the benefits of nuclear energy. This is what's good about it. The fact is that it has a better accident rate than any other power source, less fatalities for nuclear than anybody else. Nobody knows that. Nobody talks to them. The press is given a lot of figures. They don't understand it. They write, nuclear accident, nuclear disaster. And that's what happened in Japan. In Japan, it's such a consensual country, nobody could do anything when, when, radi when Fukushima happened. They just escalated the decision up to the prime minister, who didn't know what was going on. So he called the Americans. At that moment, the American chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority was anti-nuclear person. Strange, but true. So he gave an instruction to evacuate 50 miles around Fukushima, which was probably too much. It should have been about 10. So there are a lot of people out who are evacuated. They don't know what's going on. The papers don't know what's going on. And TEPCO, they didn't know what to do. They're scientists. They're not going to release anything. They're engineers until they know it's absolutely right. So they're withholding information because it's not for sure. So there's three days when nobody knows what's going on. The journalists are screaming to get some information. And TEPCO is saying, it's all right. It's all going to be fine. Trust me. And that's what the nuclear industry has done for years. It said, it's fine. We have a good accident um, statistics. Just trust me. Trust me. When, as you know, unless you can give people information, unless you go to the schools, unless we communicate transparently what's going on inside the power plant, people don't trust it because their basic distrust is of radiation, as I told you. So what we are trying to do in the nuclear industry now is start educating the population, young people, science centers, open up the, the, the power plants to bring school children in, to give the story. In Abu Dhabi, which I also advise, we have public meetings about the power plants that we're going to build on time and on budget. We put on the screen the, the story of the good bits of nuclear and the bad bits. Jane Fonda did her thing on the screen, and then we explained it. We have to tell the population what's going on or there will be no trust. And if there's no trust, we will have a German situation where they close the power plants immediately after Fukushima because they didn't trust nuclear. So now what's happening in Germany? They're buying coal. I'm sorry, they're buying gas from Russia. They're buying nuclear energy from France. They're burning their own coal, the dirtiest, worst lignite coal. Emissions are going up, and the price of energy is going up. But because the country didn't trust nuclear, they closed it. 
Now, it's time, my time is up, so I'm going to say one thing. The problem with the nuclear industry is it was a trust me industry. It said, we know how to do it. Nuclear is safe. Trust me. When I was young, my father told me, if any boy ever says, trust me to you, <laughs> don't. <laughs>